honest in my art um, and speaking the way I would speak in real life and talking the way I would talk. Um, and so we're going to start light and then we're going to go, we're going to go. Is that cool with y'all? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Boy approaches me after I get off stage and tells me I'm pretty but says nothing about my poem. Because it's easier, would rather me pretty than powerful, can't comprehend all that beast in this body, he wonders how such ugly words could come out of such a pretty mouth, like you ain't never heard a siren scream before, like woman ain't always been both monster and Mona Lisa, this mouth was a machete before it was ever Michelangelo, before it ever painted or prose, it was a pocket knife, sharpen anything long enough and it becomes a weapon, and men don't want weapon, no, men want mouths that are malleable, soft, easy to bend, easier to brand, the boy calls me pretty, but says nothing about my poem, <laughs> because he'd rather all this Medusa sit silent, doesn't get turned on by my trauma, would rather me a mute or a doll or something he can fuck that won't talk back, I want to say. I eat boys like you for breakfast, <laughs> that the bones of the last boy who tried to make my mouth a home are still stuck in my smile, that this flash of teeth is a warning, not an invitation, that this mouth could slice you open with a smirk, that only iron sharpens iron, and you looking real aluminum in this light, that you were never built to handle all this beast, that these scars never needed your approval in the first place that I was Lilith long before I was Eve something out of your worst nightmare or your wet dream and it terrifies you that me a banshee in a chapel could make you feel this close to God it terrifies you that woman holds all the power you think you have in the palm of her hand and I get it only men are allowed to be sexy and powerful or sexy because they're powerful yet here I am a Shakespearean saga or something born from an epic boy I'm the biggest beast that ever dared bark a tidal wave of teeth waiting to sink and smother and drown you like boat and buoy the way I speak like the bass bleeds from my breath how I walk like your chains are made of nothing but whispers the boy wants to Pandora's box all this power wants to put me in a cage where pretty girls go to die but what's a cage to a girl born with all these bars what's a prison to a gorgon of a goddess what's a boy anyways to all of this beast Beforehand, but I'm gonna say it now. Listen, I'm all about interactiveness. Okay. Let's go. If you hear something you like, if you hear something that moves you, if you feeling a way, like snap, stop, okay. scream, <laughs> clap, like I want to hear it. Like no, don't try to please. <laughs> <laughs> like, poetry. Who said food for the soul? Like poetry is my food for the soul. Mm. You know when you have a good body, like mm. right. like yeah, mm. and you do a little dance. Like that's what I want you to do when you hear something you like that I say. Like I want, I want to know. I want to speak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, feel go. free to express yourself. Um, okay, so this next poem. Um, so a lot of my poetry is honestly about mental health. Um, I am a huge mental health advocate. I have mental health struggles of my own, as you know, many people do. Um, so I write a lot about that. Um, I'm a huge believer that the more we speak about it, the more we normalize it. A and the more we speak about it, the more we can connect to other people that might be going through the same shit that we going through. You know what I'm saying? Um, and community in that way is really, really important to me, um, especially in the black community where, you know, mental health can be kind of a crazy topic and, you know, mm -hmm. all that jazz. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get into this poem. Um, that's that. Um, Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. They say when drug addicts go through withdrawal, 
they often enter the fetal position, a posture where the body folds in on itself and holds, limbs into the torso, head tucked, chin to chest, they say it's one of the most familiar positions a human can have because your body remembers the safe walls of your mother's womb first and morphs, trying its best to mold your pain into a memory as the drugs are leaving your body. Mm. And I wonder if dope is just short for dopamine mm. because when depression smacks the spring out my step, my body crunches into itself like crack rock like all my joy been snuffed out like all my happy just got smoked like euphoria be a pipe dream my knees kiss my elbows in reverence and the fetal position becomes fatal a mm. place to question god like god why i'm only happy when i'm high or why i'm only high when i'm happy or why does joy always seem to leave me with withdrawals they say you can't be born without dying first that the contraction squeeze you so tight that you receive less oxygen on your way out that the closer you get to birth the less you breathe they say when you die your chest tightens as the oxygen leaves your lungs that the closer you get to death the less breaths your body bellows and ain't it crazy how my body so easily remembers being born at the times i most want to die how when death feels like it's knocking on my door my body holds me like my mother would like a wound would how the fetal position feels so familiar so like home how oxygen and oxytocin are two chemicals the body cannot live without how a bottle of oxy is nothing but death mimicking life and i think that's just what my body is looking for mm. a way to get as close to death or birth as humanly possible mm. a way to pinpoint that nothingness or everythingness that moment of painlessness and peace and inject it directly into my veins so i wonder did i ever really want to die mm. or did i just want to be born again Ooh. come on Come on! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, whew. Sheesh. We can take a collective breath. Yes, because that was. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna do one more. Um, this poem is very appropriate. Um, I know er who's got some like real unpopular food opinions, like some like. <laughs> Unpopular. I, I, have, I have one. I don't this like watermelon. You don't like what? Oh, see, we right here. I mean, I love watermelon, but I hate collard greens. There we go. Okay. I hate collard greens. I know. Don't don't take my black card. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't come for me. I really, I just don't like collard greens. Thank you. Um, but I want you to write a poem about what it's like, specifically in black households, not necessarily having autonomy over what you put into your body. Mm. Um, and how that can just feed into a whole lot of other shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, this poem's called Collard Greens. It's, it's, it just feels probably talking about food and freeing ourselves. Like, Let's yeah. go. Um, okay. I pretended to like collard greens for the first 20 years of my life. Let that nasty, grassy, green shit slide down my throat like a good girl. Swallowed and smiled, more grimaced than grin like, mmm. Wow, that's so delicious. And the lie tastes like acid on the tongue, like regret, like wishful thinking. I wash it down anyways because it's just habit like that. I've just been programmed that way to eat whatever crosses my plate to know I ain't going nowhere till that shit is spotless to be grateful I have anything to eat at all my parents made sure I knew my free will won't free mm. that my choice won't a choice mm. that I was going to eat regardless if I liked it or not growing up in a household where no 
is more curse word than nigga. Mm. Means no. Mm. Gets caught in the back of my throat like neck bone. Mm. A thorn in my thorax waiting to be hacked up like ham hock. No. Be a barrier. Be a boundary. A broken bone and a bullet begging for me to pull the trigger. So the first time I told a nigga no. Mm. And he didn't listen. Mm. My body froze. Mm. Remembered supper time before I could and said, You better eat whatever crosses your plate. You ain't going nowhere till that shit is spotless. Be grateful you have anything to eat at all. So I was. And I did. Because that's what good girls do. Shrink ourselves until we're small enough to swallow whole. Let our bodies be a rest stop. Force feed ourselves collard greens for 20 years instead of saying no thank you. I hate that shit so when I have kids. I'ma make sure they know that yeah. no be a battle cry. A yep. dare you to fucking try me. A goddamn right because God forbid their autonomy be absent. God forbid their bodies only know what it can do for others. God forbid they choke down nose like chewing gum and spit out sanctuaries like sunflower seeds. No is my new favorite word. As Let's in go. no, yeah. you can't fuck me or no. This shit ain't yours. This shit all mine. No, you don't tell me what to do with this body. And no, I don't want none of your nasty ass motherfucking collar. <laughs> <laughs> oh.